Good morning. Welcome to Tuesday. Well, this is the first time I've had a chance to do a daily reflection since I did one on Thursday, immediately in the aftermath of the uh, riot at the Capitol. And um, so I've had, I've had days to sort of uh, process uh, my feelings about what happened, as I know we all have been. I know that my immediate reaction on the the day of it, and, and as I said on Thursday, was, you know, seeing this kind of ugly um, behavior is is not a bad thing because exposing this to the light of day uh, is part of the process of of healing. I mean, healing and accountability go hand in hand, not healing and dismissing the reality. Uh, but I realize that since then, that as I've uh, fumbled with, well, again, what am I feeling other than sort of anger and bewilderment? I, I don't know. I sort of go back and forth and I thought, well, perhaps that's true for you too. And question then being, so what do we do with it? We had a really fascinating conversation um, following worship on Sunday, uh, people who stayed on Zoom for, for quote, fellowship hour. And a couple of individuals spoke of the fact that they have uh, brothers or sisters or family members who are fully invested in the lie and how impossible it is to be in relationship with them right now and what what do we do well this sunday is the celebration of martin luther king jr's life and so we always have a worship service that focuses on his words and teachings and uh, prior to the assault on the Capitol, I had an idea of where I was going to go with, with uh, a focus. But it was uh, in the meantime that I, reading through his speeches and sermons and listening to clips, that I heard him preach his sermon on loving your enemies. And it instantly clicked, okay, this is a word from Dr. King I need to, to sp spend some time with. So... Here I am sort of jumbling um, my attempt to sort of figure out my feelings about this. Uh, how does this relate to Dr. King? How do we relate to members of our families who may as well be members of a cult? Um, and so this is an interesting time to start pulling all that stuff together. Ultimately then, I realized I just, I just need to breathe. You know, that would be the thing that my spiritual director would say when we're sort of working through lots of emotions uh, together. So I thought, well, how about we, we breathe today? I, I sort of shared with you the jumble of all the things going on in my mind. How about we just breathe? So ready? That's always what Jane Venard says to, to do. Let's do another. Let's do one more. This is such a, an, a terrible time in our country. I mean, like, uh, when was the last time we were this divided civil war? Um, so this is not going to happen, uh, any kind of healing, any kind of accountability, any kind of anything isn't going to happen immediately. And so I think as we go day by day through this, again, ass assessing our feelings every day, uh, I will need to be reminded to breathe. I might try to remind us all uh, on my daily reflections to, to breathe as well. Um, it's all it's all real. The, the, the grief, the sadness, the anger, the, the, the desire for retribution, um, all of it, very real. Um, so feel it and breathe. And say, God, help me, help our nation, help. Have a grateful day. By the way, uh, join us for our, our gratitude group tonight at 6 p.m. Mountain. If you don't have access to the Zoom link, send me an email at pastor at parkhillchurch.org, and I'd love to welcome you to that. All right? Okay, have a grateful day.